Hi everyone, and welcome again to my audiovisual channel. I am Gabriella Handel, a draftsman and the host of the show, A Conversation About Art. During each episode, I look for the meaning of art and beauty through conversations with colleagues in different artistic fields. Today, I bring you episode 42, and I will have this conversation with artist Gianluca Gerizzo. If you'd like to support this podcast, liking and sharing this video is a great way to do it, and so is subscribing to my audiovisual channel. These forms of support are immediate and have no additional cost. If you want to support the podcast with money, that is also very welcome, and you can do so by purchasing my drawings directly from my website, buying stuff I make from eBay, buying prints of my drawings, or leaving a tip. The links for all these things are in the show notes. Thank you very much for watching and or listening and enjoy the episode. All right, Gianluca Gerizzo, welcome to my podcast, A Conversation About Art. You are episode 42. Please tell our listeners and viewers who you are and what you do. Hey, thanks for being here. Um, who am I? I'm Gianluca Gerizzo, a sculptor, um, drafts person, um, currently doing both those things and teaching at a couple places and uh, recently been helping out with bronze commissions as well uh, for sculptor Chad Fisher, which has been kind of the uh, focus of the summer lately. So sculpture, drawing, teaching, those are pretty much the things I've been up to. Okay. Okay. So um, how long have you been sculpting? Yeah, that's a cool question. So I started sculpture in undergrad, like officially taking a sculpture class. Um, up to that point, my, my father, uh, John Gerizzo, is a painter. You know, he just, just retired as like, a, a, I think, 37, 38 years as a painting drawing professor. Um, okay. So I grew up drawing. And in undergrad, I started taking sculpture. But at, at the time, I didn't even realize sculpture wasn't just figure sculpture. I kind of grew up in a renaissance Italian household. Okay. And so it was very idea, you know, form and space stuff, which was amazing. I'm really glad I had that experience. Um, and so I was kind of doing the figure on my own in undergrad and then in graduate school at the New York Academy of Art, that was the first time I really started deep diving into the figure, like learning the things, you know, and having models and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So, you know, I guess around 10 years total and then with the figure seriously with like education for four years, five years. Like okay. Um, was were the sculpture classes just part of the undergrad art? Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Thing that uh, you so were I was a sculpture major. I had incredible professors, and so um, I guess what I meant was it was a lot more idea based sculpture, which is typically in undergrad. Modern, yes, in undergrad, uh, modern sculpture kind of concepts of material yeah. and space, you know, that kind of thing, really refining the idea. So that okay. Was cool. Okay, but wait. So then, so then, this undergrad, you deliberately took a sculpture. I mean, uh, so you deliberately took sculpture, or were you taking like an overall art visual art thing? And the sculpture classes happened to be part of the generalized art. So thing. yeah, I was a studio art major with this, and I think they, it was a sculpture focus. So I, I, I did. You do have to kind of pick a track for that, like you know, thesis show at senior year. And okay. so I was a sculpture, technically a sculpture major since undergrad. Okay, but then, okay, so then, but then, um, why did you pick sculpture? Mm. Yeah, that's that, okay, yeah, I get, you're getting to it. <laughs> um, you know, honestly, it was probably the reason a lot of people went into figure sculpture. I went to Italy prior to undergrad on a trip with my mother, and, um, you know, I just saw the stone sculptures and was just kind of blown away mm. and just fell in love with them, and so, I started getting really interested in stone carving. Like that concept was really fascinating to me and really exciting to me. And so when I went to undergrad, I think I just wanted to learn sculpture. Like I mm. thought that was gonna be just just the adventure to kind of take on at that time. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, and then, so in that case, when you were an undergrad and uh, you had, so the cur your curiosity for sculpture was piqued by seeing sculpture in Italy, is that right? Yeah, I would say that's pretty much like the, I think it was like the catalyst, you know, being like, wow, kind of in awe kind of thing. Uh, um, and just falling in love with, yeah, Italy in general and the sculpture all there. 
Okay, no, that makes sense. But um, and then and then so in undergrad, did you have the opportunity to experience uh, stone sculpture? You know, personally, yes. So as we got into the different years, um, you got a little bit more freedom with your projects. You know, it was more like an idea, and then you could choose your medium or whatever. And so I would go pick up alabaster from this, um, you know, shop in Portland, Oregon, and start. I just started kind of going. You know, I grabbed a couple of chisels and just. Um, I um, basically just start working and, and just seeing how, how how's, how's this going to go. And then, uh, you know, fell in love with it. Okay. Um, so, all right. So then, so then with sculpture, you said a second ago that it's been about 10 years and, um, why I have only been able to ask this question to another one of the sculptors because mm -hmm. you know, whatever, but um, why, ha why did you, you know, after having experienced sculpture and especially stone sculpture, because uh, I guess, you know, sculpture, I mean, each of the traditional mediums, quote unquote, have their shortcomings and pros and cons, you know, obviously. Um, and I would say that sculpture just requires a lot of space. Materials are very heavy, uh, very, can be very expensive. Like if you're talking about sculpts, um, stone sculptures you have to get these gigantic rocks absolutely. it's like you know how do you get into your studio how do you oh, then absolutely. sculpt them and all of this stuff so it's like why didn't you flee from sculpture like <laughs> like how oh. why has it been 10 years and you're you're still into it you know oh it's a great question i have no idea it's one of those things where it's like at some point it feels like i just don't even have a choice like it's just mm. what i need to be doing yeah you know it's like and it, there's plenty of times i watch drawing majors roll up their stuff and put it in a tube and walk out and I have <laughs> yeah. to like, you know, get two U-Hauls and a team of people. And I'm like, man, this is silly. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> but at, at the end of the day, it's just, I just love it too much, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. it just comes down to just this like weird passion. Um, but it's definitely a good question. I mean, everything gets more expensive. Everything gets, you know, trickier in that sense. But I guess I have to say, I find it's worth it. Um, I, I find the experience of, of working in stone, um just worth it at the end of the day for all that other stuff that goes with it okay so in in the materials that you can use with sculpture is stone the main one that you use yeah or, okay. yeah mul, mul, um yeah for the most part yeah lately um i've been doing pretty pretty intensive projects or helping out with the foundry side of things for like i mentioned earlier chad fisher uh, he does monuments, and he's he's incredible at what he does. He's one of the few people that has a bronze foundry in his studio. Like mm. he, just, he, you know, start to finish from a mold to bronze is just all in his studio for the most part. Um, uh, uh, and so I've been learning the bronze process, which has been pretty cool. You know, in, in light of the traditional arts as well. So I have a few things currently going in bronze um, that'll get finished up, you know, some, sometime soon. Um, so yeah, stone and bronze have now kind of been the two ways to finish out sculpture, I guess. Mm. Um, stone being like my main focus still. Okay, so then, I mean, have you stuck, I mean, is stone your your main one because it's your favorite? Uh, also of the mediums that you've tried? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah, I think it's just, I haven't found anything else that really um, just is as exciting. I, I guess just in some sense like i love drawing and i think it's the found I, I think it's the foundation of any it can be the finished foundation or the foundation for sculpture or painting whatever but drawing i would say is like the thing mm -hmm. and then for stone it's just yeah i i just um i just enjoy it too much you know it's just so difficult and exciting and i love that each moment is like permanent and i just i, I almost need that at this point to feel um, really excited every day in the studio. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, bronze is a really incredible process as well though, but um, I think of it more as like modeling clay and then getting it into a permanent medium and then using whatever I learned from that to then tackle stone again. So mm, it always kind of comes back to stone. Okay. Okay, so then, all right, so then you you mentioned, a, a, you at least in senior, uh, hinted at a couple of things that you like about the stone in that case, which is kind of like the permanency of each decision that you make. Mm. Um, is there anything else that you can, that you could point at uh, as the things that you like about stone? Because, uh, for example, um, I don't think I've ever chiseled 
I don't think I have anyway, but I could see why a person would really love working with stone because it's like, um, it, I mean, I guess I'm not that familiar with like all the rocks that one can sculpt, yeah, but, yeah, um, geology. but, but yeah, it's like they have, it, it has a translucent quality that is yeah. effectively really quite similar, if not the same to, uh, to skin because skin yeah. isn't opaque, you know, skin is effectively translucent. It has a degree of translucency, which is why you have to mix like a million fucking colors to be able to paint it, yeah, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and deal yeah. with, and you know, it's not, it's not, it's also not one color all over the person. Mm -hmm. The same person has different colors on them and there's yeah. veins and they're green and they're whatever it is and all this stuff. So it's like, I can totally see how that is analogous to stone. Because sure. it has, you know, like stone has its little veins and stuff. But anyway, I mean, what what would you say besides the 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 being stuck with every single decision that you make along the way when you're working with stone? Is like, is there anything else that you can point at that you you know that you enjoy that you enjoy about it? Yeah, yeah, like you're saying. I mean, the finish alone, like when you see a finished marble sculpture, to me, that's like just it's hard for like again, it's a very personal thing, but it's hard for me to compare anything. To, to enjoying it as much as I do with a finished stone sculpture. Mm -hmm. So I guess kind of that like carrot on the end of the stick is that it could end up looking, you know, like something you really could be excited to see or something like that. Um, the physicality I also really enjoy. Like I like that it's kind of this aggressive, you know, not always aggressive thing, but this kind of physical, technical thing that you have to work towards to kind of gain proficiency and control at, like the whole idea of chisel control. Um, I love, the tooth chisel, I guess, like the point chisel and the tooth chisel and like seeing the cross hatching and kind of, you know, tearing away at the at the material and finding the figure. All of it became more pragmatic than romantic to me. It's just like, that's like how I, I like to think of it that way. It's not necessarily like, you know, the figures inside the stone. Mm -hmm. In some pragmatic way, yes, it is because it like literally fits in it. But yeah. I, I love yeah, I love the physicality of it. Um, it's meditative, it's high stakes. And then ultimately, I, it, it can achieve a finished work that I find uh, the material alone just to be beautiful, you know. Okay, so then having experienced uh, working, uh, like you were saying in undergrad, it's, it's more like idea more than figurative. Mm -hmm. uh, having experienced that, you know, idea stuff working on the sculpture type stuff and then getting to the academy and then being able to work on the figure mm -hmm. on stone so it's like why do you think in that case that the figure has remained the the you know like the subject matter of the, the work you make yeah yeah it's a great question i even i mean you know prepping or even thinking through this conversation we were going to have i felt like i was like deep diving notes and having a good time like kind of re questioning those things. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up around figurative artists, so I think there's just like a nurture aspect to it. Like it was just always like the pinnacle thing. Mm -hmm. and I totally get that's like a very personal, you know, individual thing in art to just love the figure. But it was definitely something I grew up with. Um, I like the I like the balance between science and, you know, art, as you will where it's like there's something to learn anatomically and scientifically about the figure. There's some sort of, I mean, universal is a tricky word to toss around, but there's some sort of immediacy that's relatable to the figure, mm -hmm. um, you know, across people yeah. to an extent, you know. Um, I, I, I guess I always had this belief that I'm trying to hold on to, of like I like making work that is relatable to the non-artist type like yep. the non-educated in art type, like that mm -hmm. whole, like, I don't understand it. I'm not an artist thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that was probably like a, maybe a naive view when I was younger, but I still hold on to it where it's just something about it. It's really, you don't necessarily have to be, you know, educated in art history mm -hmm. or in aesthetics or whatever to look at a figurative work and, and appreciate it, you know, at any age level. Um, so I guess those were like the driving forces to stick with the figure. Ultimately, it's probably similar to stone. I just, there's just, it didn't ever feel like there was a choice. It's just that that was the love and that's that, that's just what, you know, needs to happen in some way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that seems right. In uh, the previous conversation that I had with, uh, the, I mean, the previous episode with Maya Brodsky, I d uh, we talked about, um, or I was also musing about that the threshold 
one process when one knows even a little bit about art mm. um, and and uh, how you know like I, I use the term lay people in quotes because it's like in a way because it's like you know in a way it's like it's like almost a different class sort of like because mm. I mean you don't have to necessarily know a lot about art to kind of cross that threshold and then you you know yeah. you suddenly you're like oh people can draw things and ideas and uh, whatever mm -hmm. it is you know like this whole thing that seems very important and very cerebral or something um and the story that i told about that is is uh that just one whenever uh, this this guy was talking about a tattoo that he wanted to get and i just sketched it out and he was fucking mind blown when he <laughs> saw it like oh my god what is that like it was some demonry or something you know yeah, and it was just like yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a so. kind of i don't know i mean it, it's like you know i don't think you or i or any person who's an artist can imagine what is what it's like to not understand what art is or yeah. not what art is or or just like whatever because yeah, yeah. we do it you know right. yeah it's, it's, so yeah. So it's it's like a, I don't know. It's I I, I, I anyway whatever. It it, it it like also reminds me of a of a book, an Isaac Asimov book, because uh, I don't know if you know. I mean, you probably do know. He wrote fiction, and in this there's this one story, one part of the story where he's talking about a, one of his characters that doesn't know what a beard is. Oh, cool. Yeah. So yeah, so it's it's you know he had this capacity of imagining it and then writing about it, and it's like. That's freaking amazing. It's like it's like a whole other type of mind. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about uh, your relationship with drawing, which is longer than your relationship with sculpt uh, sculpture, because you said yeah, you've been really. doing drawing for ever. Yeah, pretty much. You know, grew up with it. Like we've been getting sketchbooks for birthday gifts since I can <laughs> hold a pencil. You know. Um, okay. Yeah. So yeah, drawings. I mean, my dad always taught drawing. Really. Um, observation based um i tell you if i heard shapes of light one more time as a kid i would have liked that <laughs> in my mind. and he was really and now that i'm teaching it more and having learned more, more like strategies and techniques and things like that i almost i gotta give him a lot of credit for staying real true he didn't really teach like ways of doing it it was a lot of discovery and so mm -hmm. i try to hold on to that a little bit in teaching uh it's definitely a little bit more uphill battle you know for in his world with students i imagine um but it was always about seeing like if I could just boil it down to one thing, it was about slowing down, being patient, looking at the world around you, and really taking the time to, to hone it. And um, drawing as a skill is a huge emphasis. The, the idea that like it's not like some you know talent that's brought down from the from the sky. It's like you can work at it and get better at it. Mm. And you know maybe the art side of it is harder to teach, or you know some people argue unteachable or whatever. But like the skill of drawing is a skill that can be learned. So that's just how I grew up thinking about it. Um, you know, going to museums, going to any, you know, landscapes, anything that looks exciting and, you know, um, you want to take the time to look at, we always just pull out a sketchbook and start drawing, you know? So it was just a way to be a part of the world, I guess, um, in that sense. And then um, carrying that into sculpture is just like a one-to-one -one thing. Okay. Um, so, what kind of stuff do you i mean do you have like finished quote unquote finished drawings uh, do you have drawings that you consider works you know uh finished works of art yeah, the absolutely. way you would a sculpture yeah okay yeah yeah i mean it's you know like the whole the whole thing of finish i a lot of times yeah i would say most of the drawings i have in like you know your website or portfolio or whatever i would consider finished um i don't know you know that's i guess a larger conversation like when is it finished um but yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think of it as like a, absolutely as like a learning thing. Um, drawing But at is? the same time, drawing, yeah. Like a learning thing, trying to, you know, understand composition, form, anatomy, whatever it is. But at the same time, I've been really working on trying to connect that to sculpture and have like a finished drawing do its thing and then use whatever, you know, that taught me to then go work on a sculpture and then go back to drawing. Um, sometimes, I, recently, I've just put sculpture aside and just have just been drawing because I was mm -hmm. noticing I wasn't seeing the sculptures correctly and I wanted to do some drawings that were, you know, like you said, finished and um, maybe help like recalibrate how I'm understanding um, line or form or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, I would say a lot of them, um, 
have recently at least been more like finished works. Okay, so so wait, but um, so you only recently started um, like, I don't know, finding, finishing, wanting, or like wanting to finish drawings? Yeah, I would say a lot of the time, I mean, this is even pre-grad school maybe, it was a lot of it was just going to museums and drawing. It was just like, just looking at sculptures or paintings and drawing. And so um, I feel like more recently, it's been more about just the same mentality I would have in a stone sculpture, just in drawing, mm -hmm. where it's a little bit more free flow, you know, kind of more imagination driven and then um, calling it done. Yeah, and then seeing it as a finished thing and then um, moving back to the sculpture or, or, or whatnot. Okay, so then what would, you, I mean, what would you say then has changed? It's like, what do you think now, what do you think made you want to look for a, a finished drawing or what made you think yeah. of a finished drawing? Because then, I mean, does that mean that before you didn't and you just thought of drawing as like a, like a conduit towards a finished idea in a sculpture versus, you know, like what, what do you think has changed? That's a cool question. Um, I think, uh, I think my understanding of like even just set the studies at the New York Academy of Art, like learning anatomy more and I was able to start working from my head better. And so I think now sculpture was always kind of a place where I worked from my head. And now I feel like I can do that with drawing. Mm -hmm. Um, just even the properties of drawing, there's more of like the illusion of depth and stuff like that, mm -hmm. where the sculpture is like, you know, you find a lot of sculptors don't draw because there is like a disconnect between just like, like the physicality of clay or whatnot is you're placing it in space. And sometimes that's like more intimidating with drawing. And so I would say, I guess I've kind of arrived at more of a consistent idea of just like exploring the figure um, through both. And so I feel like I'm more capable, I guess, in some ways of doing it. Um, maybe that was the changing, you know, moment of being like, oh, okay, I can, I can develop a drawing further on my own, um, from my head more so, I guess. Okay, okay. So in that case, so then now in that case that you can that you, I don't know, feel comfortable, I guess, or now that you finish drawings and that you do and that you finish sculptures, what? kind of stuff I mean what do you what do you feel you say with a drawing versus what do you feel that you can say with a sculpture it's like so so it's like why do you feel compelled to make something specifically in sculpture versus why do you feel compelled to do something specifically in drawing you're hitting you're hitting the hard-hitting questions it's I'm, awesome. I'm curious I'm curious <laughs> I love it um so yeah so what can I say specifically with drawing I would say, I mean, ultimately, I think um, I'm trying to learn what I could say in a sculpture um, in terms of composition and form sense and gesture. And really, a lot of when I'm working on a drawing, like, you know, putting more time into it and you're developing it further or whatever, mm -hmm. I think I'm just trying to, I think ultimately, I'm just trying to learn and really get a sense. Like, I've been really into pen and ink lately, which uh, to me connects to like the chisel more, or it's just like a lot of permanent hatching and that kind of thing. And so I find both really fun to work in. And I think the drawing is just a way to really establish uh, my eyes, my understanding of idea in terms of just the aesthetic kind of thing I'm going for. And so when I go back into stone after drawing, I feel like I work more fluidly. And so I, I find that it helps me see, it helps me get a sense of my, you know, what kind of forms am I interested in at the time? Mm. Um, and just a little bit more efficiency, I think, in stone. Because when I go into stone, I'm not seeing clearly or I'm not, uh, maybe I haven't been drawing enough, honestly. It, it just doesn't go as well. It's just everything kind of feels muddy or I'm a little tentative. And with these things, you just kind of got to go. Mm -hmm. And so um, they definitely, hopefully, complement each other as like a, both are a learning, both are a seeing thing, both are exploring. Um, you know, the idea, I guess, whatever that is, um, in terms of, it might, it might just boil down to kind of an aesthetic feeling, mm. um, you know, connected to you know, various other things. Um, so I do hope they connect to each other. Um, but it's a really good question. It's cool to think why I finished drawing. Um, I think I want to learn what that feels like in some sense. It's almost like the, the trial run and mm. like accomplishing, like seeing, okay, I need to develop an area this far, or I need to push it this far, or I like these proportions right now, and then finish it, see how that feels, and then go into the sculpture. Okay, so, 
So does that make the drawing, even though the drawing is finished and arguably an independent artist, you know, it's a standalone uh, piece of work, mm -hmm. d does it then still work um, as a study for the sculpture? Like it's still... Yeah, I think, I think I, I, in my, my experience, even with just like, you know, displaying stuff, people have always seem to enjoy when they're next to each other. Like, I think they... I've the got, drawing and the sculpture? Yeah, like they okay. form each other, I, I hear is like, a, is, a, is a way it's been said. Mm -hmm. I don't, I haven't literally taken a drawing directly, like, this is the drawing and then I'm going to copy that into a sculpture. Mm. It's usually more of like, there's an aspect of it I like, or something like that. Like, maybe just like the gesture of the hand. And then I like maybe maybe I compile a few different drawings and go like oh oh you know that would be cool in a sculpture or I enjoy that, um, or sometimes maybe it starts with the drawing I just did and then it just changes along the way, um, so maybe yeah and some some roundabout way drawing is just like the catalyst for all the stuff like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. idea you know all, all those things connected. Okay, yeah I I talked with um, Dan Thompson uh, one of our one of our teachers. Oh, for uh, yeah. an earlier episode and uh because you know that you know that he he draws and paints as well i mean he does some sculpture with clay uh to make uh, models i mean like randy also yeah, he will make he will make uh, yeah. clay models for his class but like in terms of like his artistic expression it's uh, drawing and painting and i asked a similar sure. question of like you know what do you feel that you can say with one or the other and he was like and he said um, he said that they're basically the same in a way. I mean, in that you know, not one is not necessarily superior to the other. And he said that it's kind of. He said that they're both kind of part of the. I don't know, part of like the same intention or some. There. I mean, he he didn't. He didn't. I just thought it was interesting because it's like in my mind, when, I, I just I have a hard time understanding, and that's probably why I can't exactly repeat what he said or like paraphrase it because yeah, like sure. it's so difficult for me to think of. Like the times, the times that I've drawn or painted, it's difficult for me to think of them as the same or part of. I mean, they're part of like the same artistic expression because it's my artistic expression, obviously. But I'm trying to say something specific. Sorry for my dog. No worries. I, I have like a mystery construction going on somewhere because oh, okay. it's New York, you know. So it's like there you go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So it's like difficult for me to understand what he what he meant, and like it's like if, if an artist, you know, like you, uh, like talks quote unquote in different mediums, then I want to know, you know, what? How do they compare to you and stuff? Because it's yeah, like, it's cool. I mean, to be honest, sometimes it's just because my arm's sore, so I gotta go, <laughs> yeah. I gotta go draw. Like you know, it's like yeah, yeah. I mean, Michelangelo would. I I don't think he would have wanted us to see any of his drawings, right? Like it would have been. It was like the sculpture was the thing, and even though you know we we consider him good at drawing. So yeah, it's a cool question, you know. Um, I think to me, it gives me range to try more things. Mm. And then the finished thing is, I, I like to base a lot of how I work on feeling. It's like just trying to trust kind of things I've been enjoying or, or is connecting to me and then kind of chasing that. Yeah. And so I do find that with drawing, it's like a way to um, to learn about those things in a little bit of a, you know, more like throwaway, cheaper manner. If you mess up, it's just grab another sheet of paper, right? Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, I, uh, that's cool. I mean, and whatever Dan, dance dance is incredible. So whatever. I, yeah, you know, really. I, uh, I I'd like to just use whatever he said. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's definitely. I would say I would think of them the same when I'm finishing something. Um, one, I just think ultimately might have more power, like in mm. a sculpture. I think that 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 to me brings the most like pack, pack a punch. Yeah. But that's that's just because I love the medium. Yeah, I mean, no, I can agree. I, I can definitely agree with that with that uh, aspect of it. And just uh, like as a viewer, I mean, I have done some degree of sculpture, but not not in like the sculptor way that I'll make a finished sculpture. Um, but um, I definitely think that sculpture is impressive in the sense that it's like kind of, uh, you know, the, the whole point of a drawing or a painting is to kind of make the illusion in the picture plane of depth and volume. Sure. Whereas with the sculpture, the thing is there with you, <laughs> so it's yeah, like, yeah. so it's like that by default is like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, it definitely. I mean, that's a whole other thing too. It takes up too much space sometimes. Um, Indeed. <laughs> yeah, but I love that question because I'm also, I mean, thinking back to my, my dad just as an example. Sometimes I remember as a kid, um, just saying like, you're drawing. Like he would over, he would sometimes overdo his paintings, you know, mm -hmm. and he would even talk about that. And um, his drawings like a. a I'm sorry, my puppy just is like 
thinks it's playtime. <laughs> um, his drawings would sometimes go too far, uh, it had an energy to him, where his paintings would go too far. And so we constantly talk about <laughs> Um, we talk about what is finished, when is it finished, and yeah, yeah. Um, you know sometimes there's this need to feel like it is finished, and you you can kind of pull the energy from it or overwork it to a place where it gets a little bit duller than the kind of there's a almost like a I don't know, like I said energy I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's cool. It's a cool question. Like, when is something finished? Um, but yeah, for me, that I think all the stuff I said is how drawing connects to sculpture. I, I do think of them very similarly. One is just two dimensional and um, moves a little quicker, and, and that's that's pretty much that. Okay. All right. So all right. So then, uh, Mr. Jurizo, what what is art in your opinion? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. This question is just like. I think it's so cool that it's still a question, you know? Like, how awesome is that? Like, people Very. spend their lives questioning this. And, and then you ask, and it's always like, oh, wow, yeah, what is art? Um, one time I answered it, I said, uh, it's the thing that if it was missing, we would all feel lost and we wouldn't know why. Mm. And I, 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 that, that one seems to, I come back to that one a little, uh, here and there where I go, okay, that felt right. Um, I think it's the thing that connects us. Um, I like to think of it sometimes as like a capsule for emotion, you know, something that can really lock in something that may otherwise not be explainable. Uh huh. Um, yeah. I'm writing things down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just thinking as well. Um, okay. But obviously, it's like you could spend you could like some have a lifetime questioning what that is. Um, and throughout the different time periods, obviously it changes. But I think those are connecting to others, um, you know, place for emotion and, and something that we just, it's like a, a nourishing aspect of our world that I feel like is really necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I like the, I like the caps capsule for emotion mm. uh, part a lot because, um, Um, because whether it's a painting or a sculpture or a drawing, it, they're, I mean, they're all physical objects. Right. And so, and so it's like a repository for emotion and, and that is, I mean, I enjoy that idea because emotion is not physical in the sense that isn't, you know, it's not an object, like it's not a rock, right. it's not a piece right. of paper, but then the artist is able to deposit those things into the work via making the work absolutely um, yeah yeah and, and uh, i just um enjoy that and it's like it's yeah it's definitely frustrating about the question about what is art because i feel i i mean okay so, i mean i'm pretty ignorant about art history uh still even though i mean i know a little more than i did a few years mm. ago whatever but I still consider myself really rather ignorant on the subject, but it seems like somewhere around the Renaissance, like, you know, the guys that we like, um, Da Vinci and Michelangelo, the they wanted to, like they wanted to bring like this whole other level into art, which yeah. was like a, yeah. um, philosopher style, yeah. uh, thoughtfulness to art, um, cerebral, uh, cerebral shit into <laughs> it. And so I feel like as much as, as much as I think that's great and it's interesting for sure and it's probably a valuable addition, I also feel like it is really where the tarnishing of what it is began. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah, it feels like, I mean, I'm with you. I mean, uh, one of our, or my instructors at the Academy, Michelle Finiak, I remember she, her saying like, we're not art, art historians, let's just look at this, you know? And I, I felt, that was like such a like a brush of <laughs> breath yeah. right there. I was like, thank you, because it's like I mean, you, obviously, art history has its value, and I love learning about it. But I'm not an art historian. Um, but yeah, it's interesting because it's like there was a turning point of almost the function of art. I think is what you're you know kind of getting at. It's like mm. it used to be kind of order and structure, and it was used to kind of guide societal behavior almost in a way, right? Mm -hmm. Like you know the the columns and the, the strength of the Greeks and whatnot. Um, and then it started becoming more about the spirit and the soul and like the inner, the form representing more of the internal stuff, like not physically looking like 
what people want to look like or anything. It was just like a, it was more of an idea and, a, and an emotion mm. that was coming from that. Um, as far as I understand, someone's gonna, someone could pry that apart, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, it's interesting because it's like art, what is art and what is the function of art sometimes I think can, can you know, it's like, because nowadays it's a lot more individual based. We're not really, you know, highlighting the church and, and, mm. and getting questions from the Medici family. You know, it's like we're trying to think about what matters to us and mm. how to use that to hopefully connect to others who may feel similarly or enjoy it similarly or have it complete them similarly. Um, sculptor Gary Wiseman, who is uh, a, a kind of a mentor for Chad Fisher, I remember he, he said, um, someone who thought his work said it's like a light in a dark room. Mm. And I thought that was like really nice. Like it's like, you know, it's just about what it can do for, for you in your space. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's interesting because now we're in this place where it is like it's a question that changes. Every, the answer could change every day. It feels like mm. you know, so it's kind of cool. Yeah. No, no, I mean it's 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 definitely cool, and it's also, you know, it's um, it is cool to have subjects about which one basically can just t talk about in uh, or debate or whatever endlessly, basically. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But, uh, it, um, yeah, it's the, what you were saying about how, in the case of, like, the Greeks and stuff, it's like they were, it seems, I mean, based on what you were describing, and I mean, I agree, about how the, the work, you know, art in their, in, in their case, was representing an ideal. Uh, yes. Like right, something, right, right, right. something to which, you know, all of them wanted to strive strive for, whether it was beauty, strength, wisdom, uh, sure, sure. like this type of stuff, you know? Sure. Uh, that was kind of like embedded in the work made at the time. And it was like, and really, I mean, I think um, the, uh, just basically all of their activities were basically kind of geared towards excellence or right, just yeah, a personal yeah. improvement or something and like I'm I'm I am i am i am reading the symposium right now by Plato. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh which I'm also very ignorant about uh Greek stuff. <laughs> and and I mean <laughs> I, I I'm long, reading that yeah. huh? Not for long, I bet. If yeah, I, I I hope not. I mean I'm I'm trying to not be because it's like that's uh the, you know the it, it's cool to learn about the well, you know what what made us like in terms of ideas and stuff. Absolutely. Um yeah, so 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 it, it seems it seems like there's definitely this idea of striving towards excellence, whether it's via your relationships, whether it's by physical activity, you know, like the you know be, you know figuring out what your body can do and like this kind of stuff, uh, being wise and philosophy, talking about stuff, um, and yeah, I, I would definitely say that aspect is not missing from art in the present. Because it's like if, if, if it's more individualized, because, which it is, obviously, uh, there could still be individuals who are looking for that in their work and who will probably try to say that with their work. Sure. But um, yeah, it all, that, I mean, that aspect of the individual, individualization also makes me think that um, perhaps as a mirror of the times, um, and, and I mean, not that individualization is bad, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that having that kind of into the work, um, uh, the work, the artwork that we make mm -hmm. might kind of dissolves what could otherwise be a collective purpose. Sure. You know, yeah, like, oh, may, may, maybe yeah. if we were all going for idealization or you're just being better in general through our work and then kind of like telling the viewer that, you know, we want to be better or you can be better, like inspiring that in the viewer maybe maybe that idea is diluted in the sense that not many artists or less a, a, a fewer artists do yeah. it, you know totally yeah so you're kind of getting at like the like in some sense like a like a community standard almost like sort is, of, is yeah. Kind of where you're, like yeah that would be kind of wild i mean there is almost um there's a level of like yeah it'd be really interesting i mean that feels like that must have been what it was more like during those times where there was like a standard for what art should be like that mm. was like a thing and it's almost like freedom is is scary sometimes like we can basically do it oh it comes with risks all right you know? yeah it's <laughs> yeah like we, we can do whatever uh, as artists um yeah there's something to that that sounds i mean i do find that people that love the figure 
there's almost like a club feel to it. Oh yeah. You, really, you know, if you're really dedicated <laughs> to the figure. So maybe, I mean, I've, I've felt that. Um, it's like, it can feel kind of cool uh, to be part of that community. Um, but yeah, 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 the collective kind of goals are, it's not talked about that much, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, I guess, I guess about the function of art, I think, because uh, I, I forgot that I wanted to uh, mention that as well. I think that, or at least for me, before about before talking, before even musing about what could its function be, I think I would personally want to understand what it is to begin with, you know? Sure. Yeah, um, and like I, and I guess, yeah, yeah cause it's like, um, cause it's like, I mean, we, we haven't talked about beauty yet, but it's like once or twice, or, you know, it's a very common saying about how beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And it's like, right. all right, but then, yeah. but then what is it? You know? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it's like, that does not answer the question that talks about where it is location yeah. it's different so it's yeah. like yeah. i personally it's and it's and it's funny because like i um only recently get miffed at that uh quote or whatever i don't know who said it first i mean that that doesn't really matter but it's i get miffed about it because i'm like now it's like all right that's a useless fucking answer you know <laughs> just saying yeah. um yeah. but uh but again uh, yeah, in the case i mean i guess i i guess i guess if, if if we think about what you were saying at first uh about what is art uh how you said uh, that if it's if it's without it uh whatever is missing we'd feel lost is it that would, what, yeah, that yeah what, it would feel like it. something is missing and you wouldn't know what that is and so like right. that i mean that's like what yeah. art that is its function arguably mm -hmm. um you know and uh i am also inclined to agree with that although i don't know what would be mi what is yeah. What would be missing that you would one would feel via your gut or something that it's not yeah. there and yeah, that something should more, be there? Yeah, it's more of an intuitive definition, I guess, where it's more like, you know, I find that if I don't work in the studio for like a few days in a row, I feel really off and I mm. feel really weird. And that might just be like the artist thing. But, um, you know, it's like if you're, you know, watch those dystopian movies and they're like tossing paintings in a burning, you know, bonfire. Yeah. And oh my gosh and people all go huh you know and it doesn't really matter what you know about art you go oh that's horrible right um that would be horrible and so it's like and then imagine a hundred years later if like some kids never saw that like wouldn't that be so weird you know it'd be like they didn't know what art was there was no music there was no painting there was no books it just feels like there'd be something missing and like mm -hmm. if you introduce them to that it could be really exciting to feel the worlds of other people and the insights of other people and maybe we just take that for granted because yeah. you, you know go to a museum or wherever and read a book uh but to me it feels like it's so nourishing that without it i might you know i couldn't like put a finger on what was missing but like i know something would feel weird uh mm. be, um yeah I, but yeah it, like you're saying it might not be like tangible like some sort of definition uh but it's just something you know indeed uh there's a movie called Equilibrium. That's what I was thinking of. Actually. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> is that the one with like? He's like the. Is... That's the one with Christian Bale and the Christian gun katas. Bale? I was. The, I was what imagining is the gestures that, that they yeah, did? Yeah. Like, <laughs> the, yeah. The Mona Lisa's like in there, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think. Yeah. I know what you're talking. Yeah. About. Yeah. And uh, what? Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I was thinking because it's like you would really have to deprive a population in order to kind of, you know, for them to. I don't know, it's just that it's occurring to me that it's like, it's probably impossible <laughs> to to suppress or get rid of the creative instinct. Sure, because yeah, yeah. Because it's like, even if you think about, if you, you know, because you remember uh, the movie Equilibrium, even within the imagery that they try to make for the movie, you know, like their outfits, the architecture and stuff, there's still an aesthetic there. Sure, yeah, there's a You know, there. and yeah. even though, even though the aesthetic for, of like the architecture, for example, it's like shitty gentr gentrification stuff. Cause I, yeah, I, I talked yeah. to an architect recently for the, for the show as well. And I was like, you know, I hate these gentrified buildings and not necessarily even because of the gentrification. Cause it's like, all right, if you want to make something new again, fine. But oh my God, make it pretty fucking for God's sake, you know? And it's like, <laughs> well said. and yeah, it's like, good. yeah. And it's like the, what, so you know, I walk around the houses around here where I live and it's like, and, and I've been thinking about what houses call my attention and which ones don't. And it's like, yeah, it's this variability of textures and shapes. 
And it's like these gentrified buildings that they have been making around just uh, wherever in New York that are so goddamn irritating. It's like they're all square, they're all flat, the facade is flat, and, you know, 90 degree angles, and it's like, why are you ruining my life this way? You know, it's like, uh, right. you know, like, and, and you know, the houses that I like have like some kind of curvature to balance with the lines, and it's like this really, uh, not not necessarily organic, but it's like the very the variation, you know, like similarly maybe to when you make a drawing, the variability of marks. Yeah and how they relate to each other. It's like that variability is there for a reason because it makes the thing look beautiful, okay? And it's like, really? yeah, it's like when you're looking at the body, we, you know, it's like so much, it's like, you know, hair is arguably a type of mark and like skin is an arguably a different type of mark. Like the different textures of the tissues, it's like variability of textures. And like that is one of the probably many reasons for which it's like we can't get enough of it. Yeah, you know? yeah, you're particularly. You know, you're able to, <laughs> able to land that one. That's awesome. <laughs> it's yeah. it's like well, and I mean, yeah, it's because I love. It's like it's like I love how one one uh kind of one texture kind of fades and then it becomes another texture. And it's like I wanna I wanna try. I don't know. It's like you ask me. I don't know what it is. I wanna try to em emulate it, study it, whatever it is in yeah. in the drawing. Yeah. You know. Um. So I guess I kind of totally went off into the weeds with the rant there uh but that's, but these are the fun place yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's true but but yeah it's just like the the i guess the we it's i guess what i was trying what i was trying to get to is that it's physically impossible for us to know what it would be like to remove the creative instinct or the desire for uh aesthetic aesthetic things uh and i guess that's why i brought up the equ equilibrium movie because it's like when when we when we try to make a characters like the Vulcans that don't have, allegedly don't have feelings. It's like, it's physically impossible for us to do that. We can only imagine because it's like, we can't right. be without feelings. Right. So right. we don't know what it's like to not have feelings and just be logical, yeah. you know? It's theory. Yeah. It's just theory. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, all right, Mr. Jurizo, what is, what is beauty in your opinion? Yeah. Um, beauty in my opinion. Beauty, in my opinion, I have some things written down because these, <laughs> these are hard-hitting questions. They really are. Um, to preface the tricky thing with beauty, I, you know, I don't know if you ever had Catherine Howe, um, but there was a class that kind of challenged beauty. It was very cool because it's like any virtue. It felt like where it's like, you know, bravery is a really good thing until you use it for bad. You know, you hurt somebody, right? You're, you're brave, but you you did something you, you shouldn't have done. Um, beauty it was kind of fun to see it like as the two sides because it's a dangerous word in different mm. circles <laughs> it turns out uh and throughout history but for me beauty I, i've tried to think less about it lately um mm -hmm. i care about it i know it's something um i don't know if you've ever seen roger scruton's it's like um yes why, why beauty matters yes i think it matters yes. so it's like you know regardless of definition i know it's something that's important to me uh i see that it has its holes like you can punch holes in like you know the, the the ideal you know figure in our society or what beauty is for a person versus an idea or, or whatnot but to me beauty is the thing that really pulls me in it, it's the thing that makes me want to keep looking at it um but i know in reference to your past comment that's not actually like a <laughs> definition <laughs> uh but that's I just sometimes I don't know where to go with it other than it's it's the thing that grips me it makes me want to stay with it um and it, it to me it brings me a level of um I mean you hear a lot of like the pleasurable experience the pleasurable visual experience like it's just something that kind of clicks and then I want to I want to stick with it um and ultimately in any artwork I've always known I've really I think it's really beautiful or I love it when I want to sit down and draw it. Like that's always been kind of my my actual definition of like, oh, I just have to draw this. So mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. me, that must have meant it did something. Um, but yeah, awe-inspiring, captivating. Um, it's the thing that makes me want to look more, I guess. Okay, um, so, then, so then would you say then that beauty is something that you have to be able to see? No, 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 that's true. Uh, I, I guess I always like default to visual art when I'm, you know. No, no, sure, of course. Yeah, so, but yeah, no, yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's beautiful ideas. Like it's it's clear that that's a huge aspect of it. Where it's just like, 
even if you're watching a movie and someone says something that's profound, you go, wow, mm. that's beautiful. So maybe it's just something that kind of makes you think for a sec, makes you pause. You know, mm. it's something that, um, I mean, but that's obviously like maybe someone else would have not thought it's beautiful because it's maybe not profound or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, outside of visual stuff, beauty is a, um, I guess in, 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 it's something that like lifts my spirit like to some extent like if a dentist does a really great job mm -hmm. you're like wow that's awesome that's beautiful yeah yeah <laughs> like well done like i i feel happier because of it you know it's very okay. I, I do like that's just like if i walk through rome versus some gentrified neighborhood you know, of new york area, yes i am like on cloud nine you know yeah. um so you know maybe it's just something that lifts, lifts the spirits and makes you feel like you're Kind of entering a new plane of some sort okay yeah no that that that's perfectly fair i just i asked the question about whether it involves you seeing something specifically because mm -hmm. um so for example um what i was saying a little while ago about how a drawing if a drawing has like a diversity of marks and the relationship between yeah. those marks it's like that's why i like a drawing but a drawing can also have those things those same characteristics and I can still dislike the drawing. So, sure. so then, so, and I mean, this is the, I mean, that's, that is something that, um, I kind of, I mean, realized, I guess, um, through the con through having the conversations uh, with other people, because, you know, beauty, of course, I mean, I don't think, uh, I don't, you know, you're obviously not the, the only one that kind of defaults to it being something visual, because that's why we have beauty standards, because, um, in the sense that oh if you're a, if you're a person you know a human person and and uh and you're like yeah i love i love women with blonde hair and it's like there are probably women with blonde hair that would repulse you so right. then so then the so list of just blonde hair right right yeah. so then like the list of physical characteristics of a person or a drawing or whatever don't guarantee that the the object or person that you're looking at will be beautiful so then that means mm -hmm. that it, it, it isn't just about seeing some, it, it isn't just about the appearance of whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, there must be something else, um, I don't know, that precedes that or that comes after that. I don't, I mean, I don't know. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it feels like, um, you know, I always loved, I, uh, when I used to um, teach younger students and I, we'd go to the Met and there was just no, like, you know, filter. Mm -hmm. um and so but it was always really cool to see them look at something and go wow that's so beautiful you know and they just it's just a boom it's just a thing you know they're not overthinking it um so but it, they didn't have much life experience and they were pretty little yeah. but there has like you're saying there, there must be i guess we can attribute it to composition that could even exist in like a person like the totality of all the stuff did something to them right where it, it just hit them with this feeling that you know it's like a a beautiful landscape or whatever it's just you know i wouldn't necessarily like just a rolling hill but if the light hits it just right and like this and that all of a sudden it's like whoa um so maybe it just requires maybe that's like the you know an argument for composition in general it's just mm -hmm. like it really is the totality of the whole yeah that then gives you something and then the more life experience we have, maybe it's like you're, you're, you know, connecting to past thoughts or feelings. Like if you listen to a song that you find beautiful, usually it like transports you to a time and a place, mm -hmm. you know, that maybe you heard it before and like really fond of that time period or something. Um, so maybe as we get older, it's, it's like our taste changes or our, 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 maybe the amount of things that we need for something to be beautiful, maybe it goes up a little bit because we have new expectations. Um, yeah, that's a it's a cool it's a cool way to think about it. It's a cool question. Yeah, the um the uh, I actually really like the idea of you know for me personally at least I like the idea of beauty as an ideal and uh, something to strive towards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in in the sense of you know the possib the possibility that it brings of becoming better in some capacity. So like that Absolutely. would that kind of then uh call uh echoes what we were saying about art and how for the Greeks or something it was it it, it kind of showed the ideal for which everyone could try to reach for or yeah. work for 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I totally identify with that. I think, I mean, I, I get that ideal kind of has like it's, you know, just in just in being conscious of the counter arguments, but I'm, I'm in line with that. I think there's something cool about like, um, I mean, something I'm always interested in is like being the best version of yourself or mm. whatever, like kind of pushing to be better, pushing to think more or think less, like whatever's going to help mm. you, you know, trying to be better and, you know, care for others, compassion, all that stuff. So those are ideals in some ways, because they're like, in, in the way I view them, they are something to strive for, mm -hmm. right? So that's, that could be considered ideal. Like it's, we're not there yet, you might never be there, but you're like pushing. So I, I think that's my, I tend to, especially in works of art, I find them beautiful when they challenge me or, or they make me question things, or I, I find that that sort of ideal nature exists within it. I, I tend to, that's where I go with it. Um, in terms of preference, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Roger Scruton, I, I watched that documentary that you're talking about, um, I don't know, like twice already, and I also read yeah. his, um, a brief introduction, a very brief introduction to beauty. It's a tiny, mm -hmm. tiny book, because it's a very brief. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's that brief, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, effectively, he because, um, you know, I, I had class with Catherine Howe, I forgot what it was, but I had class with her and effectively, um, I mean, we didn't talk about beauty or anything. I just feel like it would be something that she would talk about, about how, yeah, beauty can be bad or something. <laughs> yeah, the book we focused on kind of, it had both sides. It was nice. It was nice. Um, yeah, yeah, no. So it's just that I'm remember, I'm thinking of effect of also what Roger Scruton, I mean, it's not, it's not his argument. He's talking, he's talking about other philosophers' mm. arguments about beauty uh, or in favor right. or against. And I mean, in the, because you could definitely, you know, if we if we stick, I guess, with the visual aspect of it, it's like if you find somebody attractive, or if you want to be become more attractive or something, it's like you, maybe whatever, whatever idea of beauty you have in your mind of how you should look, then you end up being like a uh, plastic surgery addict or something. So it's like, right. so it's yeah. like there's uh, so there's that argument of you know if it's like a and and um, also tied to I mean like I was saying, tied to appearance, it's like the kind of like lustful or, you know, he's kind of, he's kind of arguing that that could be like the negative of it or, or like that yeah, is yeah. Uh, personal, like the, yeah, feeling bad about yourself, like to some extent, right? Like that, that idea of like, I'm, it, it's not, it's not appreciating who you are based on like other people's looks. Is that the kind yeah, of Yeah, something like that. Or, like or how, it's, how it's displayed as, as that way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or, or, or like if a very beautiful person, uh, makes you so lustful that you will cheat on your partner or something right, like right, that, right. like that kind of, you know, arguing for that being the negative of beauty. Um, yeah. but then I also, I think also he says that then it's like, you know, that's not beauty is an ideal or like a virtue, like you were, like you were saying, you know, um, I think. Jordan Peterson is he might have said well both about art, about about art and but uh, about beauty specifically that it's like an ideal a, a virtue not an I mean yes an ideal but a, a virtue in the sense that it, it it is a good thing like a positive yeah. driving force yeah yeah I think I think I fall into the, the the team of like I think it's inherently a good thing mm -hmm. to aim for I get that it can have its you know those negative connotations or something but I think Sometimes it's like with all these arguments and counter arguments, you just got to kind of see it like, what's your initial response? You know, mm, like, yeah. Like beauty can be really good, right? Yes. It also can like, like everything have it has its negative side if, if used in, in, incorrectly. But it's not this like black or white thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I I I I even found at one point my you know work was going towards the de-skilling thing. I don't know why. And someone mentioned like you can really lean into sensuality and it felt like such a breath of fresh air i was mm. like oh my gosh i was forgetting that i like just i just love form and like mm -hmm. you know the rendering conveying it yeah and conveying it and like it's you know you, uh, so i was going too far off the path and like probably just overthinking it and so i find it a driving force of what i care about um, and i try to keep it in a place that's like you know important to me uh in that way um so yeah i, I find it I find it like it like you know the Roger screen thing or whatever like um, that it matters, but it's yeah. just you know just like anything that's that powerful, you got to be careful with it and mm. like you know. And yeah, I think I think that hints a little bit of uh, towards really 
it's not the fault of beauty, like the idea of beauty, but it's probably the fault of the person acting like a jackass because <laughs> yeah. they don't know how to deal with it or something. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like that's not beauty's fault. It's like yeah. because beauty is just like a, a inert ideal that can't do anything on its own. It's like, you know, necessarily yeah, absolutely. like. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, and you're making me think too. It's like um, beautiful things oftentimes like come from just because you could tell someone cared about it. Mm, you know, like for sure. Couldn't... They put in the time to care about this thing, and it's 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 it leads to appreciating it, right? Yes. Um, and that hopefully you know in, in that direction can can just be nice. It can just be nice. You know, it can make it really uh, powerful and exciting and uplifting. And um, but like you're saying too, you gotta want to see it that way. I think like if you come in at an angle of like beauty's bad and like original original ideas is the only thing and i want to you know challenge beauty by like being not beautiful and all that like that's fine you know you people can do whatever they want but it's like you have to come into it with like a um you have to want to see it a certain yeah. way it feels like um to to appreciate it you know yes yeah yeah and that's that's cool that you just said that because that that has to or something of the sort has definitely been hinted at at least repeatedly throughout the throughout uh, previous episodes which i really like which is if you want to f find beauty or experience beauty you have to deliberately look for it yeah that's cool yeah, yeah it is it is cool because it's like in a way if you went looking for it and you find it you earned it <laughs> yeah you yeah, know you gave it the time you know yeah yeah okay all right so all right uh mr jerizo we have hit the 59 minute mark uh, uh -huh. And I think this is a good place to end the episode. I like this, uh, these closing thoughts about uh, beauty. So Gianluca, please tell our viewers and listeners what you're up to lately, where your work can be found, if, what you're excited about something. Yeah, uh, where, yeah. So um, currently, actually just currently trying to get uh, my studio up and running to a full capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm working on a couple small stones, um, finishing up a little portrait and then like this little 24 inch figure um we'll have a few things in bronze next month like probably four little little things and uh gonna finish out a few drawings so i'm really just trying to get like a body of work finished i have a few things going i like to have a few things going mm -hmm. uh, but my goal in the next couple months is to really just kind of close out some stuff um my website's probably your best place or instagram to see uh work currently um okay. but yeah i'm excited just to kind of get back into exploring those mediums and see where they go all right, lovely. All right, so uh, thank you very much, Gianluca, for joining me. Thank you for your oh, time. Thank yeah. you for your words and your thoughts. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. Feel free to let Gianluca and I know what you think of this conversation in the comments section. Also, I invite you to subscribe to my audiovisual channel because more of these conversations are coming. I also invite you to like this video and share it with any and all pertinent individuals. If you want to support Gianluca, myself, this podcast, or all three, the links will be in the show notes. So thank you very much. And thank you and see you next time, everyone. Bye. Thank you so much, Gabrielle.